Listen, I'm in between sessions, so I have a little bit of time to talk to you about the Voice Arts Awards. Are you excited? I visited LinkedIn today, like I do every day, and my whole timeline, I swear to you, my whole timeline was overtaken by colleagues telling the world they were nominated for a Voice Arts Award. They were all using the same Voice Arts approved graphics, so nobody stood out. Now, isn't the whole point of being nominated that you're supposed to stand out? That you distinguish yourself from the commoners, the unwashed masses, who aren't quite up to your impressive level of magnificence? Let's remember that most of the nominees submitted themselves. I said submitted, not nominated. They submitted themselves. They did not nominate themselves. That's up to the judges. A single entry for non-SOVAS members is $140, going up to $170, and companies pay even more, and there are no cash refunds. And have you seen the list of nominees? My gosh, it's longer than a Tolstoy novel. This year, we have nominees from Japan and Arabic countries joining us. The Society of Voice Arts and Sciences must be doing very well for a charity that is still without a conflict of interest policy. Interesting. A competition without a conflict of interest policy. But Paul, I can hear you say, organizing these awards costs a lot of money. Yes, then why can the One Voice Awards do the same thing for free? In both competitions, the judges are unpaid volunteers. Only at One Voice they're kept secret until the winners have been announced. Yes, I'm sure there's a lot of admin involved in running these competitions, but where is all the money going? It's going to the awards gala, Paul, to the gala or gala, whatever you say. Oh, you mean the gala everyone is paying for to attend? Yeah, that makes total sense. One voice has a gala too. You only pay for your dinner. Well, these golden statues cost a lot too, Paul. You've got to factor that in. Statues? Uh, do you mean the shiny awards every winner is paying out of their own pockets for? Last time I checked, you paid uh, $355 per prize per statue. And that didn't include handling costs. You better not win multiple awards or it's going to cost you a fortune. Again, at the One Voice Awards, no one is paying for their prize. It's free, so money is no arbiter of talent. But Paul, it's a business expense. Being nominated and perhaps winning is such good exposure. With everybody congratulating themselves for being nominated on the same day using the same social media platform, that's really going to make you stand out, right? I totally get that and don't think that during that glamorous awards gala, you get to stand on stage to thank God, thank Joan and Rudy in your acceptance speech. With so many winners in so many categories, the evening would never end. No, only the celebrities get to go on stage. You know, the VIPs who have been lured to the event to accept an award they had never even heard of. Ah, but it's always nice to say that you were in the presence of Viola Davis or James Earl Jones, right? It gives these awards more credibility and photo ops. If you are what I call one of the regular winners, don't expect to be called to the stage. You're not important enough. You're lucky if the MC or the announcer knows how to pronounce your name correctly. And who gets to pick all the languages that can compete and all the categories? Why Portuguese and Spanish, but not French and German? And why is there a prize for the best podcast, but not for the best voiceover blog? We have way more bloggers than podcasters in voiceover land. Oh, Paul, stop it already with the negativity. You're just jealous that you were not nominated. You didn't get a nomination. Poor Paul. Oh, well, that's right. I didn't get a nomination because I would never pay money to submit anything. In fact, I would never enter any competition. Never. As the composer Bella Bartok famously said, competitions are for horses, not for artists. I'm just not very competitive. I'm not a competitive person, never been and never will. And I don't need the exposure. You know me, I'm everywhere. The only competition I take part in is called doing auditions. Every new client I book is worth more to me than a gold-plated statue that I have to pay for myself. I've spoken to a number of winners for my blog, and none of them could offer any concrete proof that winning a prize 
no client had ever heard of had propelled their career to a new level. Clients hire the best voice for their campaign based on a demo and not based on a nomination or an award. If anything, they may think you're too expensive because you're now an award-winning artist. But surely, Paul, you must hate Joan and Rudy, who organized this out of the kindness of their hearts. Why are you so mean, Paul? Are you a racist? <laughs> Remember, I used to be a broadcast journalist, and journalists are skeptical by nature. They question everything, the good and the bad, and that doesn't mean I don't like Joan or Rudy. I don't know who they are, really. I've never met them, and I probably never will. I'm nothing but a person with a loud mouth and an opinion who knows a little bit about the business. I would never ask you to agree with me if you... I want you to make up your own mind if you believe that submitting for an award offers good return on investment. Don't let me stop you. No. Who am I to do that? All of this doesn't mean that I'm not happy for you if you have been nominated or have won in previous years. I hope it gives you the acknowledgement and validation that you're longing and hoping for and that winning a prize will make you rich and famous. Yes, I mean that. And I also hope that you will stay humble and understand that it's not the end of the world if you don't win. It doesn't mean you're a loser. It just means that a very small and very select group of subjective judges thought someone else was slightly better than you are. And, you know, there's always next year. Good luck with that.